Hi, I'm Dr. J, and this is a video of how, how to analyze experiments that have two factors, that is, two explanatory variables. And the primary techniques we'll be using are two-way ANOVA and contrast. As usual, there'll be a link up here to a playlist all about regression. This is the last set of videos in that playlist. And there'll be a link down below to a PDF version of the slides you see. All right, so we're going to think about an experiment that has to do with the effect of variety and planting density uh, to determine yield uh, in a, an agricultural experiment. And so we're going to go through in this video a series of uh, experimental designs that you might see in your data or that you might see in other people's data. So we'll talk about a balanced complete design, then we'll talk about what happens if it's unbalanced but complete, and then what happens if it's incomplete. In a next video, we'll also discuss what if your scientific question is specifically about trying to find a density that's optimal in terms of determining yield. And uh, so that the model we will use to answer that question is distinct from the model that we'll use to answer the first set of questions that we have uh, with this balanced and incomplete uh, designs. Okay, so here's the idea. So we have an experiment, it's done on tomato plants. We have three different varieties. We're just gonna call them A, B, and C. We have three different planting densities. We're not gonna worry about units, but let's say the densities are 10, 20, 30, and 40. Um, and so we're going to start with an experimental design and probably the experimental design that uh, perhaps makes the most sense for this data is to be using a completely randomized design or CRD. We had a previous video all about CRD designs. Let's suppose to start off with that it's balanced and that there is replication. And so what we mean by these terms is complete first means that each treatment combination or a combination, here's a combination of variety and density, that each combination is present in the experiment. That would be a complete design. A balanced design just says that the number of replicates of each of those treatment combinations is the same. Randomized just means that we randomly assigned the levels of the treatment to each of the individual plots that we have reserved for the experiment. So we would randomly determine what variety and what planting density to do on each parcel of land, each plot. Finally, replication just means that each of the treatment combinations are going to be in the experiment more than once. All right, so that's uh, sort of the setup for the experiment. Uh, this setup is often referred to as a full factorial or a fully crossed experiment. So you might hear those terms and it, uh, it talks about this same structure of a completely randomized design. Okay, so let's think about what scientific questions that we might have from this kind of experiment. This is something that's really good to do before you actually do the experiment. It'll address why you're conducting the experiment. Maybe it will provide ideas of how the experiment should be conducted differently depending on what the questions are that you have. And so we might have these kinds of questions. How does variety affect mean yield? How does density affect mean yield? Does density affect yield differently for each of the varieties? All right, so those are sort of general questions and we might get more specific within each of those combinations of questions. We might say, how is the mean yield for variety A different from B, say, averaged over the levels of density? Or perhaps, how is the mean yield for A different from B at a particular value for density? Two different specific scientific questions. We can do the same kind of specific questions for density. We can say, what's the mean yield for density 10? Uh, or how is that different from density 20 on average, that is averaged across variety? Or we could ask the same question for a particular value of variety. All right, um, for each of these questions, we want to know number one, is there an effect, right? And then if there is, right, if there's some statistically significant effect, we want to know almost immediately what's the magnitude and direction of that effect. And so my approach primarily is to construct or to compute credible and confidence intervals. We know from our previous work that in this instance, these are going to be exactly the same, so they're both credible and confidence intervals, and that those intervals will answer these questions. We know that those intervals do not cover zero, then the answer to the first question is yes, there's some effect, but immediately it tells us the magnitude and the direction, as well as our uncertainty around that magnitude and direction. And so that's the approach that I'll be using here. Uh, this is a depiction of some data from the experiment. So you can see for each level of density, we have three replicates of each of the varieties. You can see that by noticing that there are three of the uh, 
different colors, right, within each value per density. I have to apologize for those who are colorblind. I will fix the slide so that also the shape uh, is by variety. And so if you go to the PDF down below, you can pull up that picture with an improved version of this uh, plot. Uh, so the second thing you can see is that there does seem to be some effect of density. Overall, it seems like some kind of curvature is occurring where maybe you have the density at, density at 30 providing some kind of optimality compared to these other values of density. You can also see that there's some effect variety. C seems to be generally higher uh, than A and B are relatively close to each other. All right, so these are the data that we're going to analyze. We could first just calculate some summary statistics. Remember that almost all the calculations we need for doing two-way ANOVA tables are comprised in this summary table. So we have, for each of the combinations of variety and density, we have a number of observations. You can see that that whole column is three. So this is a balanced design because every time it's three. You can also see that uh, every combination of variety and density is represented here, and thus it is a complete design. For each of the combinations, we also provide the mean and the standard deviation for that combination, realizing that the standard deviation, right, we only have three observations to calculate a standard deviation, so we should expect to see a lot of variability there. All right, so our primary way of thinking about this experiment is going to be through a two-way ANOVA. And so we start thinking about having two explanatory variables that we're going to, for the moment, consider as categorical. Those two explanatory variables will have i and j levels respectively. So variety, there are three, so i will be three, and density, there are four, so j will be four. The model that we're going to be thinking about is this model right here. You've seen this kind of model before, but we're expanding it now to an additional explanatory variable. So we have an ANOVA model that has a response y, i, j, k, that's the yield, possibly the log yield. Uh, they're independent, normally distributed with a mean that depends on the particular combination of the explanatory variable values, the i, j combination, and we have a common variance around those means of sigma squared. All right, so y, i, j, k represents the kth observation for the i level of the first variable, that's going to be variety for us, and the j level of variable two, that's going to be density for us. All right, now we can think about ways to construct these parameters mu i j. And so there's two main approaches that we're going to be thinking about. One is something called a main effects model. This main effects model, you calculate that mean for a particular combination of variety and density by taking some overall value mu and adding the effect of variety, that's that new i, and adding the effect of the density, that's that delta j. All right, so that's the main effects or additive model. We could uh, make this model more complex by adding an additional term. Now you can see the gamma ij. That gamma ij is essentially the interaction. And so it means that whenever we add a particular uh, treatment combination of variety and density, we have to add the appropriate gamma ij value. This is often referred to as a cell means model. And the reason for that can be seen in a table like this where this table just says, hey, those 12 cells that represent the combinations of treatment and density all have their own means, right? As opposed to the additive model, where as we've seen before, if you move down a row, you always add a constant term. If you move down the next rows, again, you add a constant term. It might be a different constant term, but you add one. If again, if you move across the columns, same thing. You're always adding a constant term. Right, that's the additive model, as opposed to the model that says all the cells have their own mean. That's the cell means model. Okay, so we're actually going to construct this model as a regression model, at least in R. That's the way that we're going to do it. And in order to construct it as a regression model, we need to choose a reference level for our explanatory variables. So we're going to choose that variety C and density 40. That's going to be the reference level. Um, we're going to include or construct indicator variables for the levels of variety and density that are not the reference level. So those are going to be, uh, actually for now it's just the variety and density. Then we construct indicator variables. So I, uh, V I equals A just says that variety for observation I is A. The indicator D I is equal to 10 just says the in that the density for the ith observation is 10. As a reminder, indicator variables or dummy variables that are constructed from these indicator functions are either zero or one. 
They're 1 when the expression within the parentheses is true, and they are 0 otherwise. So if the v, uh, the ith observation's variety happens to be a, then that first indicator will be a 1. If it happens that the ith observation's density is 10, then that indicator will be 1, and otherwise those indicators would be 0. All right, so now let's construct our models. So first we have the additive or main effects model. We're going to start with our overall uh, intercept term. We're going to have a line here that is the line for variety. So you can see we have a coefficient for the indicator for variety A and a coefficient for the indicator of variety B. And we have a similar line for density at 10, 20, and 30. And again, no density at 40 because that is a reference level. If we want to expand this model into a cell means model, then we add a couple of lines down below. And those lines have the product of each of the uh, indicator variables for each of the variety density combinations. So you can see the first one, which is a beta 6 coefficient. It has the indicator that variety is A, and that density is 10. Okay, And so when you're thinking about that sort of gamma ij term, that's where it comes into play. All right, so this is those ANOVA models as regression in the context of this variety density experiment. Um, we can also construct ANOVA tables. Now, in a previous video, hopefully there'll be a link up here, there is a, uh, an, an approach about how you calculate these tables in a one-way ANOVA when there's only one explanatory variable. Now that we have two explanatory variables, it's slightly more complicated, but very similar. All right, and so I'm not gonna go through all the mathematics, but the ideas are much the same. So we have the first line here for factor A. We're gonna have the sum of squares for that factor. We're going to have a degree of freedom, which is always the number of levels for that factor minus one. We're going to take the ratio, that's that mean squared column, and we're going to calculate F statistic, that's the mean square divided by the uh, MSC, uh, which is the mean square error cell. We have a same line, or similar line really, for factor B, but just now the terms for factor B, and we can construct uh, the error and then the total from uh, the remainder. And now this is what the table would look like if you had an additive or main effects model. If you have the model that has the interaction, then you add an additional line. That additional line has to do with the interaction. And what I really want you to see here is the degree of freedom cell. So the degree of freedom for the interaction is going to be the product of the degrees of freedom for the corresponding factors. So in this case, i minus 1 times j minus 1. All right, we are going to compute these tables using r. So in R, all you get are those lines that said factor before or interaction. Um, and so we can see those factor lines. That contains the relevant information that's really of importance. Uh, in particular, we tend to look at the degree of freedom column and just make sure that that makes sense with the experiment that we have. Here, since we had three varieties, the degree of freedom is two. Since we had four density, the degree of freedom is three. So that all seems to make sense. Uh, we can use those p-values to help us in answering scientific questions of interest, possibly in determining what model to use. We can see with the bottom table, which is the table that includes the interaction, first off we can see that the degrees of freedom for the interaction term is the product of the degrees of freedom for variety and density. We can also see that we have an interaction term that is not significant, so it would be fine to move forward and remove that interaction. But there's actually differing opinions on what to do here, all right? So some argue for uh, excluding the interaction because it's not significant. Others argue for including it uh, because it's probably non-zero. And I happen to be in that latter camp. So what I'm going to suggest is that as you analyze these types of experiments, that you include the interaction. And, uh, and part of the rationale is because that insignificant interaction doesn't mean that the interaction is not important. It just means that you don't have enough data to say that it's important. And in particular, um, we're going to have a biased estimate of sigma squared if we use the additive model as opposed to the cell means model. Now, it does get a little bit more complicated to interpret the interaction model, um, but I'm going to show you how to do that, and our primary tool is going to be contrast. All right. So we're going to move forward with that cell means model. So this is a depiction of what the estimated means are in that model. Perhaps I should add some uh, standard errors or 95% confidence intervals to these means. Um, but you can see here that the lines are not parallel. That indicates that we are using that interaction model. Uh, but overall, we can see that pattern that we saw before, where we have sort of some curvature here with a peak 
uh, yield at a density of 30. And we can also see that variety C seemed better than both varieties A and B. All right, so as I mentioned, the main technique that I'm going to use to answer scientific questions of interest uh, is contrast. And I'm gonna do that using the EM means package in R. So the first line will just run the EM means, the estimated means for all the different varieties in this case, because we did pairwise till the variety. Uh, and then it will do the comparison of the different varieties. So C minus A, C minus B and A minus B when uh, you're averaging over the levels of density. We can do an equivalent analysis here for density. So for density here, we have the estimated means at 10, 20, 30, and 40, averaged over the varieties. And we have the comparisons of each of those pairs of densities, again, averaged over variety. And so we can now start to address scientific questions of interest with regard to the differences between varieties and density when averaged over the levels of the other variable, All right? To answer what happens at a particular value of variety or at a particular value of density, we can again use the EM means package. The output here kind of runs off the page, but you'll get the idea. So here, instead of pairwise being just variety or density, you can see we use the interaction. And so when we use that interaction, then we get estimated means for every combination. And we also get pairwise comparisons of each co possible combination. Now, most of these are likely not of interest to us, but we might have had a scientific question ahead of time about what happens when we're comparing certain varieties at a given density, or we're comparing certain densities at a particular value of variety. And we can do that comparison using this contrast table. So as a summary, uh, I suggest you use that interaction model, use contrast in R through the EM means package to answer those scientific questions of interest. Uh, one step I did not do, but you should definitely do, is to check your model assumptions. And then we um, also are gonna talk about in a bit possible treating density as a continuous variable rather than treating it as a categorical variable. That would be an alternative model. The next video, we're gonna take this same example, but we're going to see what happens when we have an unbalanced or an incomplete design and see how that makes the analysis slightly more complicated. Hope to catch you there.